Well, the argument for Boris Johnson was always that the Tories needed a winner, that they hadn't won a majority for 23 years, and that they needed a kind of unconventional politician if they were going to do that. That argument obviously took a big blow on election day when the Tories did win a majority. It has then taken another blow with the election of Jeremy Corbyn as Labour leader, suggesting that the Tories don't need to take any risks to win the next election. Adding to this is that Boris at the moment is betwixt and between. He's an MP, but his day job is being Mayor of London. He's in the political cabinet, but not the actual cabinet. And I think Boris is struggling to work out how to kind of carve out a political role for himself at the moment. He is also, despite his kind of very genial personality, he's not the most naturally clubbable person. And I don't think he's yet uh, found his feet in the Commons again, both in the chamber and in the kind of tea room and all the other social places that matter so much in Westminster politics. Well, George Osborne is, is a politician transformed. You know, in the 2010 general election campaign, he felt the need to shut himself away in party HQ. He didn't think he was much of an electoral asset for the Tories. In 2012, his political career almost came to an end when his budget unravelled. But now um, he is the pilot who has weathered the economic storm. You know, he is touring the world, viewed as prime minister presumptive by foreign governments. And he has this quite awesome network of support. You know, four of the people who were his parliamentary private secretaries in the last parliament now sit around the cabinet table. You know, he has more patronage, I think, than anyone else in Tory politics. Well, Nicky Morgan is, is the first of the 2010 intake to make clear publicly that they are thinking about running for the leadership. In an interview with The Spectator this week, she makes clear that if her family circumstances permit, she would like to run and that she thinks that there should be a female candidate. Now, some people will say, oh, she only became an MP five years ago. She's far too inexperienced. But I think Nicky Morgan has, A, a history of being underestimated by people. And also, uh, as we reveal in The Spectator this week, David Cameron wants to carry on as Prime Minister until 2019. Yeah, the idea is he would announce he was leaving in the spring of that year with the new Tory leader then being unveiled at the party conference that autumn. That gives Nicky Morgan quite a long time to establish herself in the public mind. And you've got to remember that the 2010 intake is the largest, biggest single group in the Tory parliamentary party. And if they start swinging behind a candidate, that candidate will be quite a formidable presence. I also think that Nicky Morgan is going to try and run as the candidate of a kind of centre-left of the Tory party in this contest. It's very interesting that she is clear that she has absolutely no doubt which side she'll be on come the EU referendum. Well, I think the Tory conference is going to be a, an interesting mix because on the one hand, it's a victory lap for David Cameron. I think the official slogan of the conference is security, stability and opportunity. For David Cameron, it could really be summed up in one word, vindication. He turns up as the first Tory to win a majority in 23 years, and that, that's quite something. But on the other hand, we'll also see the beginnings of the, of the manoeuvrings for the leadership contest that is to come. I think one thing to watch for is who says what on Europe. Um, at the moment, the polls show that in and out are much closer than they have been. And that a majority of Tory voters are, are leaning towards out. But at the moment, every single one of the candidates for Tory leadership appears to be on the inside of this debate. Watch to see if anyone makes any movement on that. 